He will embrace me in His arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good morning. I'd like to welcome those who are watching this video this morning to stay with us and be blessed by the preaching of God's Word. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. If you take your Bibles and open up to John's count of the gospel in chapter 17 with me, please. Jesus, while alive on earth, prayed many times. Jesus prayed when he's standing up. Jesus prayed when he's sitting down. Jesus prayed laying prostrate on the ground. Jesus prayed on a boat, prayed on the seashore, prayed in people's homes, and prayed on top of the mountain. Jesus prayed in the daytime, and Jesus prayed at the nighttime. I say that because Jesus was a man of prayer, okay? And that's important for the church today because the church are supposed to be people of prayer, okay? <clears throat> I speak to God through prayer. Only the Christian can do that. Those who have repented of their sins and been baptized, have their sins washed away and received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they're the only ones that has access to the throne of God. All the people of the world ever has been or ever will be, if they haven't obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ, they do not have access to the throne of God. The word prayer is used so loosely today in our country and in the world today. Everybody's a Christian and everybody can pray. Now I'm not saying that we shouldn't tell people to pray because, you know, we can tell them to do a lot of things that wouldn't be good. But their prayers aren't heard. It doesn't go to God if they're not covered by the blood of Jesus. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They can't pray and God hear their prayers. But the church can, okay? Every Christian can. And there's a reason for that because God wants you to pray. Okay? He wants you to pray. God wants you to pray every day. God wants you to talk to Him every day. That's how we did it, okay? Now, some of the things I mentioned about Jesus a while ago in His prayers also goes with us today. Okay, there's, you know, a lot of people bow their head and close their eyes in prayer. I don't see that in the scriptures, okay? I'm not saying don't do that. I just don't find that in the scriptures. But I do find in the scriptures that they looked up to heaven when they prayed. Men in the early church, they lifted up their arms and looked up with their eyes open and prayed. There are those who fell flat on their face on the ground and they prayed, okay? They prayed sitting down, sitting up, in the daytime and the nighttime, for many different ways of prayer, okay? Not just for being thankful of the food, but everything, okay? Thanking God for all the answered prayers. God wants His children to come in Him in prayer, talking to Him. He wants us to mindfully and verbally talk to Him in prayer every day. There shouldn't be a day go by that you, you aren't spending some time with your Father in Heaven. Okay? And He will likewise spend that much time with you. God talks to you and me through His Word, the Bible. Okay? To have communication with God and Him communicate with you or us, it has to be done the way that He says. Okay? And prayer was thought up in the mind of God, not man. Before the world began, it was thought up in the mind of God. And that God would speak to us through His Word was thought up in His mind before the world was created. It is at least 6,000 years old of how God made it possible that He can speak to us and we can speak to Him. It's old as anything 
ever created, ever there ever was, it's older than that. It always worked, it will always work. That's the way God wants it. So if you're a Christian this morning, God wants you to be speaking to him in prayer. And he wants to talk back to you. Okay, He wants to be a part of that communication. And he does that through the word, through the Bible. That's why the Bible's the most sold book in all the world. And it is. Now I know we got people out in our government, people in society who's saying that Christianity is uh, <clears throat> about to disappear and, and uh, the Bible isn't important anymore. You know what the devil, that's what he does. And we can expect that out of him. Even, even if it's not true, we can expect it out of him, okay? He's going to lie from beginning to the end. And so, I'm telling you this morning that the Bible is the most, most important book there is this world has ever known. The most sold book, okay? But it's not the most used book. In a lot of homes, you can go in and find the Bible sitting on a, a big, nice table with a, 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 some kind of apron underneath of it. And, or it's sitting up on, in, a, in a china cabinet or something, protecting it from getting dusty. God did not create the Bible, His Word, for that purpose. Even though you, it's okay to have them like that, but you need one where you've got fingerprints on it. And the pages are bent because you've been turning them, okay? You need one also for that. In John chapter 17, we find the Lord's Prayer. You can go to our schools today out of many places and ask them what is the Lord's Prayer? Especially in the elementary schools, okay? They could probably take to a place where they've got it uh, put together in a case somewhere, a glass case. And so this is the Lord's Prayer in Matthew in chapter uh, 6. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, okay? You can find that. But that is not the Lord's Prayer. That is a prayer, a model prayer, that Jesus used to teach his disciples how to pray. Okay? That's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord didn't need to be taught how to pray. A prayer is one devoting themselves to bring out their true feelings, okay? Uh, sometimes it's easy to do that, sometimes it's not. Sometimes we're willing to devote or uh, bring out or make manifest uh, things that we've got on our mind, and sometimes we don't. And uh, <clears throat> prayer is when we go to the Lord in prayer to our Father in heaven, He's there to listen. Okay, to hear what you have to say. If you don't say nothing, well then he don't hear nothing. Okay? Now, if you don't ever go to the Lord in prayer, there's, you haven't said nothing to him. Okay? <laughs> you know, you take, you take husband and wife and parents and kids, etc. How would it be if you just, you never opened your mouth? You walk around the house and the husband, he's got his mouth wired shut too, and the kids got their mouth taped shut, and the wife got her mouth closed, and mm, nobody's talking. You know, you're going a year, five years, ten years, and nobody said a word to each other. Probably wouldn't last ten years, would it? No. No communication. And so it is with our Father in heaven. If we want to have that relationship with God, if we want to have Him bless our lives uh, physically and spiritually to where we can live and overcome and enjoy this life and be uh, uh, proudly to go to the next life to enjoy it even better, okay? There's got to be communication between you and the Lord, your Father in heaven. 
There's got to be praying, there's got to be reading and studying. Okay? You can't get out of it. You can't get what God, the Father in heaven wants without it. So, that you know, the church needs to make up their mind that whatever's taking place from me studying the Word every day, I need to move some of it out of the way and then put this in there. Okay? It don't matter whether you're a young person or an old person. This is not, you know, God's not asking us to climb a mountain. Okay? He's not asking us to uh, run the 440. Okay? Uh, he's not asking us to uh, lift a thousand pounds. He's just simply asking us, we can all pick up the Bible, find this good place, turn the light on, get with our Father in heaven, and talk to Him, and Him talk to us back. <clears throat> what do you see sometimes? There's mom and dad, and there's the kids. And they're sitting at the supper table, you know. They're not letting the phone ring and bother them. Let, got the TV shut off, and everybody's getting the opportunity to uh, tell how their day was, okay? And get to laugh a little bit and enjoy each other's time, and they're smiling going on, and being with the family, those who they love. Well, it's the same way with our Father in Heaven. When we got His Word open, we ought to be praying and reading and studying, and He's talking to us. We're communicating together. And when uh, He tells me in His Word that, that I'm going to go to Heaven and spend eternity with Him, I ought to be jumping for joy. I ought to be smiling. It's great communication. But when He tells me that because I haven't been praying and I haven't been studying, I will fall away from him and I'll go to that lake of fire called hell. Well, then that makes me worry a little bit, okay? That brings that trembling fear in my life. Well, that's why we have His Word and we can pray and communicate with one another because God wants us to have that relationship with Him. We ought to be dependent upon God more than anything else. You know, a lot of people worry about their job. A lot of people worry about their bills, whatever kind they are. A lot of people worry about their health. And that's fine. But we ought to be so dependent upon God that we understand that regardless of what's going on, He's going to be there with us and see us through. Now I know we've all probably have experienced to some extent that we wondered, how is this going to turn out? But we held on and stood there with God, with the Lord, and He helped us through it, okay? I can look back at many times and see where He did. <laughs> Okay, I've got that to fall back on. I don't worry about our bills at the house. I don't worry about those things. I worry about my family making it to heaven. And I worry about my loved ones making it to heaven. I worry about those in the church, you see. I worry about, uh, can I evangelize in some way and tell someone the good news? That's what I worry about. I don't worry about that other stuff. And I think that's what Jesus is trying to teach us here in John chapter 17. Okay, let's go down in, um, in um, verse 9. Jesus said this, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. First of all, in a, all in a nutshell, he's talking about all those that would come to him and obey him. Revelation 22, the Bible says, Whosoever will, let him come take the water of life freely. Whosoever will. But in, in the four accounts of the gospel, he's talking to the apostles, about the apostles. And then there was the 70 that were sent out, okay? And uh, Jesus said, I pray for them. 
I pray for them, even though they spent three and a half years with him. He said, I pray for them. He told Peter, I have prayed for you because Satan is trying to sift you like wheat. One of the most leading apostles and preachers of the New Testament times, Jesus said, I pray for you. Jesus said, I pray for them. He said, I pray not for the world. <laughs> In this manner, okay? Um, <clears throat> we can't pray for the world like we do one another, okay? We can't pray for... The only thing we should be really praying for the world is that they would get to hear the good news, the gospel, and have that opportunity to make a decision to come to the Lord, okay? Because blessings are not for the world, God's blessings are for His people, the church, the family of God. Now the world gets to enjoy some of those blessings, but it wasn't intended for them. That's why He says, I, I pray for them and not for the world. For for them which Thou hast given me, for they are Thine. All mine are Thine, and Thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. If we belong to Jesus... Well, then we belong to the Father in heaven, God, okay? And we are one. He belongs to us and we belong to Him, okay? <clears throat> and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. If you take the Bible and do a study on the Godhead, from the time before the creation, as much as the Bible gives us, until the book of Revelation, okay? And find out how much the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit agree, okay? They never at one time do say anything that is opposite of one another, okay? They're always in total agreement, okay? There's no arguing, no fussing, no fighting, uh, they're always in total agreement. So if, if we have done a study like that and we come to understand just how it is with the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, what Jesus is saying, we ought to be the same way. Okay? We ought to be the same way. Now that's up to every individual Christian to stop and take a look at yourself and say, am I that way? Am I performing as a Christian in that manner? Am I agreement with all the other Christians there according to the Word? Is the things that I say and the things that I do according to the mind of God? Are we all working together for the same thing? Okay? That's what it ought to be. That's what Jesus wants. Wake up, Joanne. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. We're not of this world, because Jesus wasn't of this world. Okay, that's the reason we're not. We've been baptized into Christ, and because Jesus wasn't of this world, neither are we. Okay? Without Jesus, we couldn't say that we would be of the world. And Jesus has escaped this world, but he had to die first, didn't he? He had to die that physical death. Yeah. And then he escaped this world. It's going to be the same for you and me. The only way you and I are going to get out of this world and get to heaven is we've got to die physically. Okay? And that's what he's talking about. And he prays, Jesus prays not only for those people that time, but for the church all the way till he comes back. The time he comes back. That the Father in heaven will keep us from the evil one. Okay, that's what he prays for. That's why he makes intercession for Jesus right now. We could not go to the Father in heaven except we go through Jesus. He's the intercessor between us and the Father in heaven. 
What you and I do and say, Jesus goes to the Father in heaven about it. Okay? When we pray, we pray in Jesus' name and His authority, okay? And He goes to the Father about it. You and I cannot go to the Father directly. We have to go through Jesus. And so, <clears throat> we can't get out of this world until we die physically. So, we're still alive in this world, and the devil, he's going to attack us. But that prayer still stands. And we ought to model that prayer. We ought to be praying for one another. That we're protected from the evil one, you see. As brothers and sisters of Christ, that's what we ought to be doing. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Not only did Jesus have joy, first of all, it was a joy for him to leave heaven and come and die for us and give us the opportunity. And now he knows he's going back to be with the Father in heaven. He knows that we can be there also with him. That's reason. That's what the joy is all about. Yeah, the joy isn't getting a bigger paycheck. Joy isn't getting a new car, a new home, and a whole host of other things. The joy is knowing that if I will be faithful unto the God and His Word until the end, that I'm going to be where Jesus is. Okay. In John chapter 14, uh, the Bible says, starting verse one, it says, "In my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you." And where I am, <laughs> you're going to be there too. That's a promise. Okay? How much do you believe in promises? Well, <clears throat> if you've had a lot of promises made to you by man, whoever it might be, and they didn't keep them, well, I can understand that your hope and promises may not be that great. But on the other hand, if you've been made a lot of promises by your husband or whatever, and for the most part has kept most of them, well, you understand that it's a great thing to be promised something and it's fulfilled. But our God has promised us eternal life with Him forever in a place where there be no sickness, no death, no crying, no pain. And that's a promise that he's going to keep. If he promised to send a sacrifice to this world to die for us, which was his son, and he did, then he'll keep his promise on that eternal life with you and me someday. The only thing it is, the only thing that's got to happen, is we've got to talk to him and let him talk to us. There's got to be communication. Okay? Now you might examine yourself this morning. How much do I communicate with my Father in heaven? And how much do I allow him to communicate with me? Yeah, he can, he can force it on us. He can make it, make it happen if he wants. But we'll never be able to prove our love to him that way. You see, it's when it's our choice to go to him and make time for him. Then we prove our love to him, okay? And that's what he wants. That's what he wants. He goes on to say, <clears throat> verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. <laughs> and all the different avenues that we have to talk to people, do you talk to them about Jesus? Now I know there's a lot of talking going on, okay? Lot, people everywhere, all people everywhere talk about something every day. But for the Christian, are you talking to people about Jesus? I believe because the reason because some people don't talk about Jesus that much is because they're afraid of the results. Okay? They're afraid of being made fun of. They're being afraid of being threatened. They're afraid of not getting what they expected, okay? And so it kind of harms us, keeps us from talking about Jesus. 
But if you do a study on what Jesus did, he left the splendors of heaven, and he came to this earth, and it's like a lamb uh, dumb before his shears. He opened not his mouth. Not one time when they were crucifying him. Not for his own purpose. But yet he did it. He was willing to do it. You and I don't have to go to the cross and be crucified like he did. <laughs> okay? And, and you might make someone mad at you if you talk to them about the Lord the way the Bible says. And they may not like it. They might cuss you out. They might say some bad things or whatever. So what? Go ahead and talk about Jesus. That's what he's saying there. <clears throat> I have given them thy word. Every one of us have that this morning, okay? We have his word. <clears throat> and the word hated them, not because of who you are, but because of the word, who Jesus is, okay? That's what the Bible's full of that. The world won't hate you, they hate Jesus. That what you're talking about. Because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. If we're not of the world, then our language ought not be of the world. Okay, our language ought to be of the kingdom of God, the church. It ought to be about Jesus. Okay? Now I'm not saying that every second of the day and everybody you talk to is just constantly you're talking about Jesus. No. But I believe that people are talking more about the world than they are Jesus. Okay? And that ought not be. Verse 15 said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. See? He don't want the Father in heaven to just with some kind of majestic power zap us out of here into heaven. He wants us to die a physical death and then leave this life and go to heaven, okay? They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said that three times. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay, that word sanctified means to be set apart from the world, okay? Set apart from the world. If you've been baptized in Jesus Christ, people ought to know who you are then, okay? By your fellowship, by your communication with the Father, people ought to know who you are. They ought to know you're a Christian, okay? By the way you talk, by the, by the things that you sing, by the things that you watch, the things that you do, People ought to know that you're a Christian. Okay? That's what he's saying there. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. How can that happen? Someone might say, well, that's where I want to be, but I struggle. I don't always accomplish that. Well, the Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. You want to be sanctified, set apart from the world? It's going to be through the truth. It says, thy word is truth. That's how it's going to happen. Okay? <clears throat> I don't know that I was necessarily wrong <laughs> when I first became a Christian. And when anybody would ask me something, the Bible would come out. Okay? You know, uh, <clears throat> what did you use for bait today? Go on fishing. And the Bible comes out. That's not what I want. You know, that's got nothing to do with talk about fishing. And it didn't. I can understand people getting upset. and You know, ain't, ain't he human? Can he talk about anything else besides the Bible? Well, I was wrong in that in a way. But in a way, I wasn't. Because the Word of God is the truth, and that's how he sanctifies us. That's how he sets us apart from the world. It's through the Word. Now the next thing is to uh, wonder about is do you want to be sanctified? Set apart from the world. If yes, don't you know if you haven't been that today God has given you the time to begin 
every day studying the Word, every day until Jesus comes back or until you take your last breath. So do you want to be set apart from the world or not? Don't tell God that you do. Show Him that you do. Okay? John 14, 15, the Bible says, If you love me, Jesus said, you'll keep my commandments. On down there it says, If you love me, you'll do what I say. Then he goes on to say, Those, I'll show you those who don't love me. Now listen. Those who don't love me are those who don't do what I say. Okay? Now every Christian needs to ask herself, Do I love the Lord? Be careful. Careful what you say. Because if you say you love the Lord, the only possible way he's going to ever know it is if you study his word, do what he says. Now think about that. Tomorrow's coming around. Monday morning's coming around. What is on your agenda? What's on my agenda? Think about it. God, you know, <clears throat> I generally get up first. When Joanne comes in, she says, Good morning. I say, Good morning. Or it'd be vice versa. Or James, he got up this morning. He said, Good morning, Dad. I said, Good morning, son. Or Kirsten, we communicate one another. We say, Good morning. What about God, my Father in heaven? Do you get up in the morning and say, Good morning, Lord? Do you make some time for the Lord Jesus by opening up His Word? Or is there just too many other things that you've already planned that gets in the way? I want to go down to verse 21, and I'm going to stop. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The final question. Do you want your husband to go to heaven or go to hell? Do you want your wife to go to heaven or go to hell? Do you want your kids to go to heaven or go to hell? Grandkids. Mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, aunt and uncle, neighbors. Is there anybody that you want to go to hell? The only way that they have a possible chance is that the church is one as the father and his son is. That's the only possible chance that people who aren't Christians can go to heaven. He says again as I close, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. How is the world going to believe that the Father sent his Son Jesus to this world? If the church will be one, as Jesus and the Father and Holy Spirit are one. That's how the world's going to know that's what the Bible says anyhow. No, we've got preachers and all kinds of people writing books and this and that uh, about different ways. The Bible says only one way. Mm -hmm. Some think about this one. If you're not a Christian, the Bible says you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. By believing that message, one repents of their sins. Repentance is a change of mind and conduct toward the way that you're living and turn towards God. The Bible says one must be baptized by immersion to have their sins washed away and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Not to help you speak in tongues and do miracles like some teach, but to help you live a faithful life unto Jesus and His Word unto the end. You're all a Christian this morning, and God is speaking to you, and He does through His Word and through the Holy Spirit. 
and he's nudging at you because maybe you know that you've not been communicating with him the way that he says as much as he wants you to. And that's sin, my friend. And sin will separate us from God and will separate us from God for all eternity. For the Christian, 1 John 1, 9, the Bible says, if we will confess those sins to him, speaking of Jesus, that he's just and he's faithful to forgive us of those sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's good news for the Christian.